So, this is the first time on my Fan Fiction Ideas segment where I'm going to be talking about an anthology series that I always had in my head since day one of watching uh, Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja. Now, for those who remember, who know the show, you guys know that every four years, a new ninja uh, takes over the mantle uh, until they're ma they have to turn in their mask after their four year, uh, four year stint of being said ninja. And this has been going on for centuries, all the way back to the 13th century of, uh, um, yeah, so anyway, that's kind of the idea, is that I had this idea for an anthology series that would focus on the other ninjas from the past and uh, some ninjas of the future, and we'll get into that in a moment. So yeah, I was kind of like, you know, this would be a cool idea um, of like, what what if we saw, uh, we, the only ninja we saw was Mac Anthe, and that dude was a total dick. So, I was wondering, what, what were the other ninjas like? So this kind of led me to kind of create an anthology series that would focus on different ninjas. Each story would focus on a ninja of each timeline. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, let's talk about some of the ninjas um, throughout time I've uh, thought of. Starting with uh, Clayton Slade. Clayton Slade was the ninja of 1861. Of the eight of 1860 to 1864, excuse me. Um, so yeah, he was in the time of the Old West. He was a cowboy ninja. That's right, cowboy ninja. He had more of a Western look to his ninja attire. He also carried uh, pistols. <laughs> However, he wasn't allowed. To, the ninja allowed him to carry guns, and another ninja to carry a few other in the past, a few other ninjas in the past to carry guns, but they weren't allowed to take human lives unless necessary, uh, absolutely necessary. So yeah, Clayton Slade was the ninja of the out of the old west, and actually had a horse. He actually had, took a black a uh, black stallion that he stole from the uh, town's mayor, who was corrupt and working secret, and actually was a McFist. He was a, he was fighting against the May mayor McFist. Mayor uh, was if one of, oh yeah, Royce McFist. So that was the idea, is that he was combating Royce McFist, who was working with the sorcerer, and the apple didn't fall far from the tree. So that was, so in a nutshell, there's a little bit about Clayton Slade. Uh, Clayton Slade also, um, he was kind of like, personality-wise, I had it that he was a lot like Jonah Hex. He was very grizzled, he was very, very much a loner, and was willing to do what needed to be done. Um, he was just kind of... He preferred you. He liked using sh uh, six shooters. He was also half in. He was also half Native American. So he did know how to, you know, use weapons like to, uh, bows and arrows and spears and what have you. And he was a very much a front, a very much like a frontiersman, a young fr frontiersman. So there's a bit about. Um, <coughs> uh, there's a bit about uh, Clayton Slade. Now another uh, ninja from another timeline is Britt Cranston. Uh, Britt Cranston is the ninja of the 1920s, one of the ninjas of the 1920s. And he was a very noir, um, noir type ninja. In fact, I kind of had it that his, the, his costume was very reminiscent of the Shadow. In fact, his name Britt Cranston, of course, comes from Britt Reed, the Green Hornet, and Lamont Cranston, the real name of the Shadow. So I kind of figured, you know, I'm already doing noir stuff, so why not just go all out, right? <laughs> So, Britt Cranston was the uh, ninja of the 1920s, and he not and also he did carry guns. And his cost he carried he wore a scarf around his mask. Um, and again, like I said, his costume was very um, invocative of the shadow. And he was very he was kind of cold. Um, a very he wasn't he was cold, but he also came from a, a uh, background of wealth. But, however, when he got, he, how he got the mask was that he was not like his father, who was uh, part of a cult who was trying, who was also working with the sorcerer. So his whole thing was that he was battling a cult in Norrisville that was worshipping the sorcerer and trying to bring him in. But he kind of didn't have that same uh, thought process, like, a lot of people are gonna die. So he raged against his father and the cult, and his whole, his four-year stint was him taking down the cult of the sorcerer, um... And that was his uh, time as the ninja, essentially. Um, so there you go. Uh, another ninja, and this is a little further back in time to the 1700s, was a pirate ninja by the name of <laughs> by the name of Bartholomew Thatch. Now, 
Bartholomew Thatch was a ninja of the high seas. This is when, you know, a time period when Norrisville was plagued by pirates, stanked pirates even, and he, w and he was an orphan who got the mask. Um, actually, he stole, he actually st broke into the school of Norrisville and found the mask thinking it was going to be worth money because he was a pirate at the time, he was still a pirate, and took the mask, and this is when his crew tried to betray him, he put the mask on, and fought them. Now keep in mind, Thatch was very young. Um, he was he was a very young pirate. A lot of ki a lot of people, you know, a lot of youngsters did bec uh, become pirates at that time period. And he fought against the government at the time. He also did fight monsters. So he was very much personality wise, very much like um, Edward Kenway from uh, Assassin's Creed, where he want he at first wanted to use this for his, use the power of the ninja for his own gain, but eventually became a good person on a whole. So, there you go, um, Bartholomew Thatch, which again, um, his name is, uh, is, uh, play on to other pirates, uh, Bartholomew Roberts, aka Black Bart Roberts, and, uh, Thatch being Edward Thatch from, uh, of course, Blackbeard the Pirate, so Bartholomew Thatch, there you go. If you're wondering if Clayton Slade was, um... Was a name for anything? Nah, I just like the idea of the name of Clayton Slade. It wasn't a uh, pair, a, a, a play on to any other uh, pirates. Uh, I mean, to any old Westerners at the time. So I just thought, yeah, that's a very Western Clayton Slade. That's a very Western name. Um. Anyway, moving on now to uh, World, the Ninja of World War One. Now, the Ninja of World War One um, was a guy named by the name of uh, of. Uh, what was his name? Oh, uh, Preston Pierce. And Preston Pierce was a a young soul who was a uh, young man who wanted to fight in World War I, in the Great War at the time, and actually fought uh, and actually went overseas as the ninja to fight. Um, and there's a little bit about that. So following that, we have the ninja of the night of World of World War Two, who was a man by the name of Joseph Rivers. And Joseph Rivers was uh was a uh was kind of like uh buck it was kind of like steve rogers before he got the mask uh, before he got the super soldier serum he was very patriotic but his health problems prevented him from joining the war so river so joseph rivers when he got the mask because he was so pure at heart he once again fought uh, he went overseas to fight uh, the Nazis and the monsters they were creating they were actually they actually learned to harness the sorcerer's stank and made monsters out of them he was also a ninja who had a very more military look. He had very much, like, military gear. He also did carry a Thompson submachine gun with him. Um, but again, he didn't use it to kill pe He didn't use it to kill people, eh, except for the occasional Nazi now and again, but it's not, uh, they're Nazis, you know? It's okay to kill a Nazi. Anyway. So, following that, um, to another ninja I want to talk about, a female ninja by the name of uh, of Megan Freeman, and Megan Freeman was a the first um, black female ninja, and she was the ninja of the of the early 1960s. And yes, this was a time where, um, of course, there was the uh, of course the act of you know there was segregation going on. There was a lot of high tension racism going on. So yeah, she was very much caught in a world where she was protecting the world, but at the same time, she wanted to help with the real world problems as the ninja. Um, so that's why she got the mask was because she was a very she was a you know an activist. She was trying to protect the world, you know, from itself because she understood. Yeah, there's not you know pe monsters come in very different forms. You know, some of them you know don't turn into monsters. Some of them hide behind white sheets. So that was her whole thing. Um, that was her whole deal. Uh, that was uh, uh, Megan's whole deal. Uh, her costume was very uh, didn't she never she was one of the few uh, few ninjas of the past where I had she didn't carry guns but her favorite weapon were nunchucks. Um, like she was uh, she became very well endowed with nunchucks. <laughs> anyway, so uh, following that to a ninja of the 1970s, which was another uh, African American ninja by the name of, uh, what was his name? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I should have written, wrote these names down. But this, uh, but this ninja was the name of, um, oh, oh crap. 
Oh, uh, my, uh, of, uh, of, uh, my, of Michael Stone. And Michael Stone was a ninja of the 1970s. And I thought of him as more, like, very invocative of the, like, early, late, the mid to late 70s era of black exploitation. He was always, like, he talked, like, he kind of talked like Black Dynamite. He very, he, much, he very much talked like Black Dynamite. And he fought, like, he didn't just fight mon the monsters, um... In uh, in Norrisville High, he also took on like drug peddlers and pimps. Um, he became very much like a uh, like Luke Kate, like a hero, like a hero of the people. So there you go. So fast forwarding a bit, because I've got a ton of ninjas in these uh, timelines. Uh, fast forwarding a bit to a couple years after Randy, we move on to Zach Cunningham, his son, um, who takes over long after his father has. Um, has, reti has uh, retired as the ninja. And Zack Cunningham is, is this very fun-loving, but he it, um, he's also very, like, he's very much like Peter Parker, where he's cracking jokes in the middle of fights. Um, his costume is a little more uh, sleeker, is a little more of a sleek design than his uh, father's costume. Also, the, the, uh, <laughs> uh, the scarf is more of a... Uh, he wears it more like a belt than he does, like, around his neck. Uh, also at the time, you have Randy himself, who's now a police officer, who's not really, like, since he forgot he was the ninja, he's now, you know, he's very much like, oh, the cops do all the work, and the ninja swoops in, he's like, and, and, uh, and uh, Zach is like, uh, yeah, dad, totally, ninja bad. If he sees me with this mask, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> so there you go. And then you have the ninja of 2099. Uh, the ninja of 2099 is very much like a personality-wise like Miguel O'Hara, where he's kind of darker, he's a little more cynical, he's also a little more aggressive, but he's living in like a cyberpunk world, and he's dealing with the grandson of McFist by the name of uh, Roland McFist. And Roland McFist is... In, you know how um, Hannibal had that me mechanical arm? Well, he, well, Roland's whole body is synthetic. He's, made, he's put his brain in a synthetic android's body. So, there you go. So, all in all, guys, those are just some of the ninjas I had in mind for the Tales of the Namacon. Um, I know there's a lot of them. There's a, there's a good number of them. Um, and I hope you all enjoyed these characters. I know uh, there's a ton more I wanted to talk about, but, I, but this video is going on as, you know, as long as it is. This has been a pretty long video to begin with, so, yeah. There are a few others that I did want to uh, talk about, like um, the ninja of uh, the ninja of the Revolutionary War. Uh, yeah, I had a ninja who fought in the Revolutionary War, who fought against the uh, the British, who were trying to actually awaken the sorcerer, who were trying to free the sorcerer so he can help them reclaim the colonies. So yeah, there was a. Uh, <laughs> Also, that ninja. Oh yeah, I forgot that was that ninja was a woman. That girl. Uh, yeah, the ninja of the of the uh, Revolutionary War was a woman. Uh, was a young girl, because remember there are always teenagers who are usually uh, chosen to be the ninja. Um, also, there was the ninja of. Uh, what was another one I can just briefly mention real quick? Um, hmm. Trying to remember if there was another one. I'm forgetting. <laughs> I'm sorry if I am. I'm just like, man. I thought of so many. Uh, I thought of so many characters. Man, it is really hard to tell. So you guys, tell me in the comments below. What do you guys think of uh, the of uh, Tales of the Namacon? Do you guys like the idea? Do you guys hate the idea? And what ninjas would you come up with um, in different points in time? And what would they be like? And uh, what do you think they would be like personality-wise? What kind of dangers would they encounter? Um, just comment below, let me know, because I figured, you know, the ninja has, there's got to have been, like, a whole shit ton of ninjas who have fought throughout time, throughout the times. So, once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.